Good morning, Radical Praiser. So glad you joined us again this week as we continue with our Christmas story. Today we will discover that God intentionally chose the shepherds to be the first to see our King Jesus. Their lowly place in society reminds that God loves everyone and doesn't look at physical beauty, wealth, or knowledge. He loves you, even when it seems difficult. Let's praise and worship our God. Thank you. 
Let's begin by talking about shepherds. We will look closer at what shepherds did and how others viewed them during Jesus' time. There are two kinds of shepherds in the Bible. One kind is a nomadic, so they didn't have homes or a place to live and just traveled from town to town. The other kind resided in towns and tended sheep in nearby meadows. Both types of shepherds were viewed the same way. The culture at the time looked at shepherds as dirty and unclean people. According to Jewish people, shepherds didn't clean properly and they considered them unclean and even despised them. In fact, shepherds were not allowed into the synagogue or churches of the times. There's a TV show called Dirty Jobs. The host would allow people who worked at jobs that would be considered dangerous or disgusting. These jobs range from rattlesnake catcher, zoo cleaner, to roll kill collector. In Jesus' time, people who had jobs that would be considered dirty wouldn't have been allowed in the church. Psalms 72 and 9. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and in his enemies shall lick the dust. These prophecies are telling people about Jesus' birth hundreds of years before it happened. We get to see many prophecies come true when we read about Jesus' birth. This shows us that God had planned Jesus' birth from the beginning of time. The amazing thing is, each part of Jesus' birth teaches us so much. This passage tells us that God has chosen the dirtiest and most unclean people to be the first to bow before the Messiah. Luke 2, 8 through 15. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall to be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were going away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. This part seems to get overlooked sometimes. Maybe because there is so much amazing stuff going on here, it's easy to overlook some of the small lessons God teaches us. Men of wilderness or shepherds were visited by an angel who told them about Jesus' birth. They then stopped what they were doing and went to see him, bowing down to God's greatness. This is awesome that God reveals Jesus' birth to the humble shepherds, not the kings and religious leaders. God knew if he revealed Jesus' birth to the so-called upper-class people, no one would listen to the voice of an angel or have the time to look up the sky to see the greatest performance ever staged in the sky. If it had been the religious leader of the day, they probably would have stood there debating the angel over prophecies. Yes, the shepherds may have ranked low on the social ladder, but they had the wisdom to know when to hurry and when to stand still and listen. When the call came, they acted at once and got to see the baby Jesus before anyone else. God chose the humble and believing shepherds to be the first to see Jesus. All of us have difficult people in our lives, and it may be hard to love certain people. It's much easier for us to notice that who deserves our love and compassion. But it can be very difficult to actually love those who don't deserve it. But the truth is, none of us actually deserve God's love because we all sin and fall short. But he loves us anyway. And because of that love, it's up to us to show his love to others, whether we think they deserve it or not. In our culture today, everyone loves the popular, good-looking, rich people who have cool stuff. Often people without those things are looked down upon and it can get to where people are made fun of and hurt. Here's the amazing thing, Radical Praiser, to take away from this lesson. In the earliest of times before Jesus' birth, God chose the dirty and outcast people to be first to see him. Jesus' birth shows us he was sent to love everyone, not just the popular or smart, but everyone. Mark 12, 30, 31. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Question. What can we learn from the way Jesus treated others? Think about someone you know that isn't treated nicely because of how others view them. 
Think of ways that you can make that person feel loved and valued. That's it for today. Thank you.